Hey, boy. How you doing? Okay. This is another one of those movies that's hard to talk about because of extreme content, but we'll give it a try. Now, this is the I Spit on Your Grave 2. Okay. So, I haven't touched the original I Spit on Your Grave since I just don't happen to have an easy access to a copy of that, but I've seen it. I did review, at least if my memory is serving, I've reviewed the remake of I Spit on Your Grave during one of my movie roulettes. I think it just came up and I reviewed it then. At least, I'm pretty sure I did. Pretty certain. But I don't actually have a copy of that one. I do have a copy of this one, though. Okay, so, if you know anything about those films, you get more of the same here. This is not actual seek like a sequel per se, like following those events. It's pretty much more of the same, a similar kind of rape revenge film. So yeah, it's pretty much taking the same situation, just changing the setting, switching around a little bit of the details, and away we go. But I will say it's effective at doing so. Okay, so. Uh, we have, uh, Katie, who's, uh, essentially trying to be a model, and is not, uh, doing very well at it. Essentially, she needs better, then, to get some better photos, to get herself out there, but good photos cost money. She stumbles across an ad for a free photo thing, which she goes to, but when they start wanting her to take off her clothes, well, she balks and runs out of it. Now, there's a bunch of uh, Eastern European guys who are doing this. I don't quite recall the country. Anyway, uh, they then... Does it happen to stay on here? Nah, not conveniently. Anyway, uh, so... Uh, one of them seems to develop a fixation on her, however, and uh, goes to her place to bring her the photos they did take. Try to be the nice guy. But later when he gets drunk and is surprised that she's it uh seems to expect more from her in exchange for doing so, well a struggle happens and ends up with uh, her would be boyfriend being killed and her then essentially tied up in the room. Homeboy panics, calls his friends and uh then she's knocked out. And she wakes up pretty much near naked in a basement and is then we here we here we go as she is essentially used as a then a prostitution tool for them and it gets pretty depraved. And there is they are not essentially she was essentially framed back in the US for what happened and now she's stuck here waking up in another country where she hasn't how they got her there, I have no idea. That's the biggest plot hole of this film. How they managed to get an unconscious girl to Europe. But... So, several scenes of her being abused, tortured, raped. And then uh, put into a box and buried. Well, however, when the bottom falls out and she ends up underground, she survives. And then, uh, while... Well, like stealing from the church to get some food, builds her strength back up, and then hunts down the people that abused her. Also, she at one point tried to make a break of it earlier, but the people, the one well, of the people involved in like the, I guess, uh, relation, uh, like uh, welfare relations things, was in on it. So, despite the cop having some sympathy, uh, she gets taken away from him before she can help, and then gets thrown right back in. And that's when she gets dumped. So she hunts down the people who abused her, as well as the people who kidnapped her, and uh, she gets her very sadistic revenge. Gore effects are great, and this, it is very, definitely a, depicts the horrific events and is effective in that. So and that's why the movie works and does succeed at what it's trying to do. But again, it's hard to give a glowing review to this sort of material. 
Of course, I'm the one who owns it and now has watched it more than once, so I can't really talk too much, I suppose. I guess I have a victim per shock. So, if there is a glaring plot hole that does take me out of it of how the heck they smuggled her across, then overseas in such a short amount of time. I don't know how that happened, and they never address it. Um, I go to Six McGuffins. It's for a direct video sequel to this, it's better than it has any right to be. It does, it does a good job at it. Uh, you were rooting for the character, and uh, I do kind of like like the her uh, building herself back up kind of angle that works pretty well. Especially her like interactions with the priest, just calling her little mouse. That that was working. Well, so, yeah. If you can stomach that kind of content, give it a watch. If it's not for you, no one will blame you. Give it a pass. Hard pass. Alrighty. See you later, Void.